Thank you, folks. Good to be here this morning. Good to have everybody with us today. I am not a fatalist, but I certainly believe in the sovereignty of God. In that sense, I believe that uh, if you're here this morning, it's for a purpose. And if you're watching this thing over the Internet, there's a reason for it. Uh, if you'll remember, last week we picked up, uh, we started talking about the things that we've covered. And I'm going to get back into that with you this morning. But first, I'm going to deal with this Temple of Baal that uh, they're going to, uh, they're supposed to uh, have this thing up April the 19th. Father, Lord, I need wisdom, and I need the gift of teaching, and I need unction. My Father, I pray that you bless your word to the hearts of the people as you blessed and break the bread and fed them with it. Then I pray, Father, that you'd bless this and break this and send it forth for the purpose that you intend it. And I know it will not return into thee void, but it'll accomplish that which you please and prosper in the thing whereto you sent it. In thy name I pray, Lord, and amen. amen. All right. Now, in the last couple of weeks, I've been doing a little reading about this temple of Baal. Uh, as you know, or if you don't know, ISIS, these bloodthirsty, murdering Muslims that are running loose over there in Syria and Iraq, and uh, they, have, uh, they have destroyed a lot of the old pagan ancient sites in Palmyra. When they took it, uh, from, uh, from, when they took it in, in battle, they have since destroyed a lot of those sites. And some of those, I, mean, I suppose all of them are world heritage sites. And they are ancient, no question about that. And uh, one of them was a temple to Baal. They destroyed most of it, but they left the gate for some reason. And um, the, uh, the, uh, they were, the city was taken back over by, uh, I guess, Iraqi troops or Syrian troops. I don't know which one. But uh, they drove ISIS out, and, uh, and now we have uh, this World Heritage Site, these people here that are going to, uh, they're going to erect a temple to Baal in New York and in London, in England. And that's only the beginning because they intend to erect them all over the world. Uh, I'm going to read the, uh, I've got a good article here about it. And I don't know what all you may know, but I'm going to read what I've got. And I think it's very interesting because of some of the connections that are made with this. Very interesting. So listen carefully now to some of the things that I read about this, and then we can comment on it later. This is uh, by Michael Snyder, and this was taken from The End of the American Dream, March 31st, 2016. He says that I am about to share with you some absolutely astounding information. It turns out the exact day when reproductions of the arch that stood in front of the Temple of Baal are going to be erected in Times Square in New York City and in Trafalgar Square in London is also the exact day when a very important, important occult festival related to the worship of Baal or Baal begins. Remarkable. April the 19th, that ought to bring some things to your mind is the first day of a 13-day period of time known as the blood sacrifice of the beast that culminates on the high occult holy day of Beltane on May the 1st. In some parts of the world, Beltane is much better known as May Day. And it has been described as the Illuminati's second most sacred holiday. As you will see below, we have indeed witnessed a disturbing series of blood sacrifices during the second half of April in recent years, and many people wonder if there's a connection. April 19th is also known as the Feast of Moloch. If you're not familiar with Moloch or Molech, it is an ancient Canaanite god that is repeatedly denounced in the Old Testament. Child sacrifice was a key feature of the worship of Moloch. And a giant statue of this pagan deity is set up at the Bohemian Grove in Northern California every year. 
Remarkable, don't you think? Yes. It is just a coincidence, is it just a coincidence that reproductions of the arch, A-R-C-H, is that arch or arc? How do you pronounce that? Arch. arch? Uh, is it just a coincidence, the reproductions of the arch that stood in front of the temple of Baal in Palmyra, Syria, are going up in New York and London on the precise day when the Feast of Moloch is celebrated and when the blood sacrifice to the beast begins. The organization in charge of this cultural project is the Institute of Digital Archaeology. The following comes directly from their website. On April 19, 2016, in cooperation with national and international cultural heritage preservation organizations and in conjunction with World Heritage Week 2016, the Institute for Digital Archaeology will install a monumental scale re construction of Palmyra's, Palmyra's triumphal arch on Trafalgar Square. Through this project and others like it scheduled throughout 2016 in cities both inside and outside the Middle East, the IDA seeks to provide an optimistic and constructive response to the ongoing threats to history and heritage that have captured headlines over the past year. Our aim is to highlight the potential for the triumph of human ingenuity over violence by offering innovative, technology-driven options for the stewardship of objects and architecture from our shared past. Now let's just stop for a moment here and start thinking. This is the first time that I know of that the movers and shakers of the New World Order have come out openly and challenged Islam. They've, they're challenging it. And that, of course, may be all, may, all of this is a, could very well be a false flag. In other words, a false flag is when something happens and the underlying motive behind it is not easily known. That's a false flag. But anyway, are we to believe, the author of this uh, article says, are we to believe that this date was chosen at random? It is, is it just some sort of weird accident that the date they decided on begins a 13-day period of time which is exceedingly significant for the worship of Baal? April 19, May 1st, blood sacrifice to the beast, a most critical 13-day period. Fire sacrifice is required on April 19. Fire sacrifice is required on April 19. The following list of events that have happened on or around April 19 comes from Vigilant Citizen. Number one, April 19, 1993, Waco Massacre. An FBI assault led to the burning down of the compound of a sect named Branch Davidians, killing 76 men, women, and children. One of the saddest things I ever saw in my life was a photograph of an incinerated baby as a result of Waco. April 19th, 1993. I don't know all the facts about Waco, but I do know this. That they could have arrested David Koresh any time. Prior to that, he was in town and out all the time. If it was simply a matter of taking him into custody, no problem. They wanted to make this an event. And they had the news cameras there, remember? The news media was there. It's not that something happened and they called them in. They were there when the assault was made on the compound. And, of course, it reminds you of, of, uh, of, uh, of a weaver and his wife, I forget what her name was, standing there holding a baby in her arms and her face was blown off. A man had a 10-power scope and he leveled a 30 6 or whatever he was using, 308, and blew her face off holding her baby. That was at Ruby Ridge. And they... There's a lot of people out there in the West, in the West, because this is Waco, Texas. There's a lot of people out there in the West that don't see things the way a lot of people here in East Tennessee see them, because that's their backyard. And they understand what's going on. And I want you to remember this now. That place went up in flames, Waco, Texas, and they want a fire sacrifice, remember? They want a fire sacrifice, and it went up in flames. If you've ever seen it, any documentary of this thing, you will see big tanks 
pushing into that building and you'll see a, a it looks like a gun barrel and you'll see you'll see flame coming out of the end. They say that the Davidians started the flame. How do they explain that coming out of the end of that thing? I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Not at all. But anyway, April the 19th, 1995, Oklahoma City bombing, 168 people killed. This was by, this was uh, supposed, supposedly in retaliation for Waco, uh, April the 19th, that had happened before. Uh, a lot of strange things about that. Uh, April the 20th, 1999, Columbine High School Massacre. 13 people murdered, 21 injured. April the 20th, 1999. April 16th, 2007, Virginia Tech Massacre. 32 killed, 17 injured. April 16th, 2013, the Boston Mas Marathon Explosions. Three killed, 107 injured. In addition, don't forget that Tamerlane Sarnayev was shot to death on April the 19th. I also want to note that 2016 is a leap year. April the 20th will be the 111th day of the year. And triple murders are considered to be power dates in the occult world. This 13-day period, which begins on April 19th, culminates with a high occult holy day of Beltane on May the 1st. In recent years, this occult holiday has experienced a tremendous resurgence, especially in Europe. The origin of Beltane can be traced all the way back to the worship of Baal in the ancient Middle East. The following comes from Examiner, so forth and so on. Beltane begins April 30th at sundown and lasts until sunrise on May the 1st. Beltane is the opposite of Halloween on the satanic calendar. As Halloween is a time of reaping, while Beltane is a time of rebirth. This holiday is a time to celebrate fertility, indulgence, the rebirth of spring, and the Sumerian god Enil, which, Enlil, which is Baal. This is where the name Beltane originates. And it gets into detail about some of the debauchery and some of the filth that is associated with this. And it is unbelievable. Now, it should be believable. I mean, you understand how filthy this nation has become. And you reject the light and you reject God, there's only way to go is to hell. When you reject the truth, there's nowhere else to go. But in any event, this is what's happening. And uh, this, uh, this thing is, uh, makes you wonder. They can say whatever they please. Why did they choose the date, April 19? Now, of course, we have to wait. This is the 10th. We've got nine, what, nine days is to wait and see what transpires on April the 19th. Yes, sir. Is the New Babylon in New York City? Yeah, it's called, it's an area called New Babylon. Okay. I don't know New York that well, uh, but an area then, apparently what this brother says, an area in New York City, which is called New Babylon, is going to be where they erect this gate. And the second largest obelisk is located right there. Okay, second largest obelisk in relate to what? In the world or in the United, in the United States? States. Yeah. Okay. The Washington, D.C. obelisk. Right. Okay. Second only to it. Okay. All right. I got this email just a couple of days ago. Dear Pastor Lawson, I've been listening to you for years. Your teachings have brought a better understanding of what to be aware of these final days. It seemed to me no one was watching what had taken place in New York City as it concerned the Empire State Building last fall. The idol goddess Kali was put up in lights across the whole building. Google it and you will not believe it until you see this for yourself. This confirms what your recent teachings about idols and, and women idols. Keep up your study, so forth and so on. Yes, sir. Kali, K-A-L-I or Kali, I don't know how you pronounce that, is that grotesque face that has to do with death. death, and death. Exactly. 
in, uh, and that in Hindu, the Hindu religion. So, right. So the point he made was in 1956, I think he said, they projected a cross on the building, and now they're projecting an image of Kali on the building. Come a long way. Now, what do you think's going on here? See, uh, there are those out there, many of them out there, who are saying that this arch that's going up could very well become a gateway for the, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, going through it and coming back through it or whatever, of evil spirits. It's and, within, a, within a mile or two from where they're putting this gate up. Uh-huh, right. So this may, uh, this may very well portend something that, uh, I don't know what they're expecting, but it could be fulfillment of Bible prophecy. You know that CERN definitely is a gateway, and, uh, and they've definitely had some stuff come through there. And so when you look at that compared to this, you're seeing already, now here's what's happening, folks, in your face with this stuff now, in your face, they think they've got you brainwashed to the point that either you don't care or you're part of what's going on. And persecution of Christians is just, well, it's already started for that matter because of the people out there uh, on, jo on some job sites, if you don't sign up to this the New World Order, uh, you don't get promotion, and you may wind up getting fired. And uh, as you saw what's happened in North Carolina when they voted to, to, uh, to, to, say that, uh, to say that men have no business in a woman's bathroom, in a woman's restroom, uh, they're getting all kinds of flack over that. And these businesses that I named off Wednesday night now are, are becoming part of what? Bruce, Bruce Pre uh, Springsteen, a singer, uh, has come out now and endorsed this LGBT agenda. And not only him, but an, old, an awful lot have. What you're getting here is a, is, is a momentum building up like a snowball now, and it's just pushing, and you're, and you're just being caught up with it. And it's, it's amazing to me at how it's accelerating. That's a, right, a pandemic. It's, it's bad, folks. You know, I hate to be the bearer of bad news every time you come to church. And, and a, lot of, a lot of folks want to hear something good, and I do too. But, but the fact of the matter is you're living in a world right now in America. The culture in this country is absolutely anti-Christ. It is not indifferent. If it was indifferent, that would be one thing. But this culture now is anti-Christ. All the way from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue down to where you live on the local level. And if you can't see that, you're in bad shape. Uh, what does it take for the Lord to come back? How bad does it have to get? What's next? You know, this is what I'm looking for now. What's going to happen the 19th? Wouldn't it be something if something came through one of those gates? Oh, with the 22nd Passover? Yeah, that's quite remarkable. Yeah, quite remarkable. Yes. Yeah, all right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I think so too. I do too. Yes. Yes. I agree with you. I felt it too. I felt it too. For the last 6,000 years, it's been man and woman. Now they're telling us that our culture and our history for the last 6,000 years is wrong and that everything that they're telling us right now is the way it's supposed to be. Right. And they can go to hell as far as I can Yeah. You have to be tough minded. You have to be tough minded. You have to be able to think into the scripture and think clearly through this stuff and, and, and come, to the, come to the realization that you are now a minority in your homeland, in the land of your birth, and that your enemies have begun to array themselves against you, and you're going to see more of them. They're going to show their two colors to these people coming out. Yes, ma'am.
Right. Yes, and now where is this? What's the venue you're talking about? What venue are you talking about? What social, what, what are you talking about? Facebook? What? British Humanist. British Humanist. All right, now what are you talking about? A, 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 what do you call it? Bulletin board? What, what's the relationship? Facebook. Facebook. Okay, okay, Facebook. Okay, all right, Facebook. All right, okay, all right. Uh huh. That's Moses, Hebrews 11, folks, that he's reading from right there. Yes, sir. A uh, group of Peter's Christians came out and said that all this stuff is about allow, allowing children to, to choose their uh, gender was, was uh, child abuse. He said, let, let nature go its course. You know, when that child hits puberty, he'll know exactly what's going on and, and what he is. And, but to try to choose a, a child's Sex when he's seven years old is terrible because these, these doctors are injecting these hormones and these uh, this, they're, they're screwing these kids up at an early age. A guy at work was telling me that his his little girl came home and said that she was a lesbian. She's 11 years old. She was convinced by this teacher that she was a lesbian. So he took her out of school and she's fine now. It's it's all about brainwashing. It's all about And you say he's a pediatrician said that? Pediatrician. Does he still practice? They haven't blackballed him? Well, it's a, it was a group of them, so Oh, okay. They, well, good for them. They came out and said what was going on. Was yeah. Abuse. Good for them. Good for them. Told the truth. But they got this little kid on, Facebook, or on, on the internet, seven years old, dressing up like a girl and putting on makeup and all this other stuff. You know, this is crazy. That's part of the worship of Moloch. It's part of their worship is to, is to confuse the gender identity. Remember, the androgynous thing is both male and female, and that's a part of it, big part of it. Yes, sir. That's right. He gave them a different place to worship because he didn't want them to go to Jerusalem to the true God. Yeah, he did. His choice there was not only spiritual but political because he's the ruler of the northern kingdom, ten tribes. He wanted to keep them separate and he wanted to keep them separate not only physically and uh, but spiritually, and he figured if he'd give them a new priesthood, new place of worship and all that, separate the tribes, and he would be able to control the people because he kept them separate up there. Oh, no. Oh, that's all right, brother. Uh, how, how, many, how many of you remember me mentioning the name Nancy Schaefer to you? All right, Nancy Schaefer was a state senator from the state of Georgia. From everything I've read about this lady, she was one fine, decent Christian lady. 
And she, uh, in the process of her, uh, uh, in her uh, service as a senator in the state of Georgia, she got into the business of lost, of, of, of missing children, children coming up missing. And uh, as she dug deeper into it, she found out that there was a network at work and that, uh, that people were trafficking in children, in children, trafficking in them. And that uh, the Department of uh, Family Services and whatever else, uh, I'm not the whole department or not, but I know many in it, according to what she says, were connected with this. And they went to the highest levels of government. And she got so far into it and they murdered her. Okay, they murdered her. Now, here's the point. They want your children for child sacrifices. Moloch, Moloch had his arms extended and they would put a screaming baby in his arms and burn that child alive. And while they beat the drums and whatever else they did, they not only did, they, they not only did that, but they had, they, had, uh, they had debauchery attached to it, uh, all kinds of stuff that's just as revolting and repulsive and sickening as you can imagine. You can't imagine what was going on while they were offering this in the woods and uh, all this stuff. And this is the kind of thing that, that uh, Solomon, as I told you before, brought into Israel. He brought that into Israel. And this is why I mentioned to you the other day when we were talking about, I think it was Sunday night, Solomon is not mentioned in Hebrews chapter number 11. His name does not show up as one of the champions of faith. David is. David was a murderer. But you read Psalm 51. David got right with God. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Nathan, when Nathan confronted him, he repented and got right with God. So the point is that if they offers, if, if, if the worship of, of, of Baal, the arch, Moloch involves child sacrifice, then it says to me that little children have been taken from our culture and these monsters have been offering them in child sacrifice to their God, which has given them power. And now they're beginning to exercise that power over you. And that power is manifested now in ways that you've never seen it before. They're emboldened, folks. Do you think they would have done this 50 years ago? You think they would erect an arch up there in New York City 50 years ago in the Trafalgar Square over there in, uh, in, uh, in, in London? And by the way, Trafalgar was a battle that uh, Nelson fought, the Admiral Nelson for the British, and he died in that battle. And he was truly a hero. He was, a, he was an honorable man, a hero. And, they, and uh, he's, uh, I think he's buried at Westminster. And they, they, the square is in relation to him, Trafalgar Square. And I don't think that Nelson would have anything to do with what's going on today with this stuff. You, these men, these women that went on before us, folks, your, mo your mothers, or your grandfathers, your great-grandfather, do you think... The ones that hit the beach at Normandy, 1944, June the 6th. Do you think that those people would approve of this stinking satanic junk that's going on right now in this country? No. 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 These people are emboldened. They're demon-possessed. They're devils. And they want to take your children away from you. And they want to take them and they want to offer them and they want to burn them in sacrifice to their gods. And they're being emboldened to do it. And when the Bible says in Revelation 13 that everybody's going to take a mark, it means it. And this is coming. We're at the verge of it right now. And it's such a sad thing that the church is asleep. It's just as dead and asleep as it can be across the country. They don't have a clue. Yes, sir. Yeah. Brother, I fear him. I get down in my closet sometimes and shut the door, turn the lights out, and don't say a word. Just get down there and tremble. 
When I think about that almighty being that I've got to give an account to. Yes, they have. Now, here's what that Bible says. It says that the Lord Jesus Christ will appear the second time without sin into salvation for those that look for His appearing. And I've always thought about that scripture time and time and time and time and time again. That is plain as it can be. He will appear for those that look for His appearing. It's called the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you have that blessed hope? Or are you tied up with this world? Are you, are you, are you, are you, you couldn't care less about the coming of Christ. And you say, well, I'm saved, I'm saved. You'll find out when the rapture takes place. You'll find out. Because that will be a separation like you wouldn't believe. He comes the second time without sin. Now that's a direct reference to the high priest on the seventh month, the tenth day of the month, the day of atonement, when he went into the Holy of Holies, they stood outside. He went in there with a sacrifice once that year to offer it for all the people. God blessed that high priest to bless the people. He walked back outside, and the people that were out there waiting for him to come back out, he blessed them. He appeared the second time. First time he had sin. He had a sin offering, a sin salvation. He took it in there, offered it. He came out the second time without sin and blessed the people. The Lord Jesus Christ carried our sin to the cross at Calvary, first time. But he will appear the second time without sin, unto salvation for those that look for his appearing. And that will be a blessing when he catches us up to meet him in the cloud. Amen. If you ever had a time to get serious with God, it's now, folks. It's now. Yes, sir. Most of our problem is that we deal with symptoms. We have some sin that appears it's a symptom. It's a sin, but it's a symptom. It's not the real problem. The problem is much deep seat, deeper seated. And as long as Satan can get you to deal with the symptoms, he'll keep you defeated. He doesn't want you to go to the root cause where it's coming from. What's really causing this? What's really going on inside my soul? He wants to keep you out of there. It took me a long time to learn that long time. All right. <laughs> uh, we covered, uh, we've got a couple more here to, this morning and I'll finish up with what we've covered. We covered these pagan gods, the androgynous sense. I want you to keep in mind, male and female, these gods are. And uh, I mentioned the other day that they just recently had ROTC cassettes, where, uh, cadets, ROTC cadets wear high heels. That's ridiculous. That's, 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 you talk about a, a humiliating, brainwashed idiot Amen. to tell a man to put a pair of high heels on. You go in the military to learn to fight. You don't go in there to, uh, uh, to tear a man's identity down. And it also happened here locally over here at this, at this uh, brainwashed place on the hill. They call UT. Yeah. That's right. They're doing the same thing. Boy, boy. What are they going to do if they have to fight a war? I'm talking about against an enemy that's 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 locked. What would they do if they had to fight Russia? The Spetsnaz. You ever heard of them? What would they do if they had to fight those people? It wouldn't be a fight. They'd roll over them like a. Uh, it wouldn't be. There wouldn't be a fight. There would. There wouldn't be a fight to it. And uh, 
I heard, a, I heard a four-star general say the other day, he said, there's one country on the face of this earth that can destroy America, Russia. He said, they've got the power to do it. Not that they can do it by manpower, man against, they've got the nuclear capability to destroy America. They've got it. And uh, it, uh, it looks to me like that uh, America is just going to roll over and, and accept it. And we are, aren't we? Really are, really are. Uh, really are. Uh, these gods are worshipped through fertility rites. You'll find it all through history. We talked about that. Temple priestess, prostitute, would receive a worshiper. And through a certain act, his uncleanness would be removed and they would worship. They called it worship. Church services today are becoming sensual. Very sensual. Have you noticed? Very sensual. Appealing to, uh, to the flesh. As you lower the moral code of the people, you make it more acceptable to engage in this type of worship. The church today sees nothing wrong with sodomy. They see nothing wrong with other gods. They engage in pagan rituals, labyrinths, yoga, kundalini yoga, tree of life, on it goes. They are into contemplative prayer. I read you the article the other day about this woman that got into contemplative prayer, and now she's worshiping the goddess, Sophia. And uh, there's, uh, there seems to be nothing that holds people back anymore. Nothing. It, it's, and I guess that's what we have to come. I, here's what I'm trying to say to you this morning. I, I'm getting mad, I tell you. I, I don't usually do this, but I'm getting angry. I really am. I, I'm getting so sick of especially people who, uh, who just don't want to know. But uh, we're taking our kids and throwing them away. Right. We're throwing them to hell. Right. We don't care. Just as long as we've got food in our belly and a roof over our head and we've got our stuff piled up around us, uh, we're happy. And it doesn't matter anymore. And the government knows that. And so they've taken our kids and, they're, and they've brainwashed them and they're making disciples out of them right under our very noses. That's, hap that's what's happening right now. And the churches today are filled up with people that have been brainwashed. And the churches today appeal to a very, to a very superficial emotional level. This is why they don't preach any doctrine. No doctrine. Yes, ma'am. Uh, absolutely. And what's happening is our sister right here made a, a statement about something that I think is very relevant, and that is she talked about how that when the Supreme Court uh, uh, legalized gay marriage, that it, it did something to the country. Well, what they're looking for is a saturation of that spirit. That's what they're looking for. And when they get a saturation of that spirit in the country, then it's, ready, it's time then to do what they intend to do to take over. What you need to do is watch for that. 
My generation's leaving. I won't, I won't be around too much longer. I'll be gone. And the rest of you in here that are part of my generation, I'm a baby boomer. I was born 1946. You know, uh, I'll be 70 years old this September, three score and 10. I don't know how long I'll be in this world, but we'll be gone. What are you going to do if you're 30 years old? Are you 35 or you're 40? What are you going to do when we're gone? If the Lord hasn't come back by then, you better do some serious thinking about what you're going to do. I may not, it may not come in my generation to where we have to go out into the fields and into the mountains and live in enclaves and live separated. But I read a thing yesterday that said the militia, especially in Indiana, Illinois, those places in the Midwest, up north, the militia is growing by leaps and bounds. Do you know why it's growing by leaps and bounds? Because people, everybody's not stupid, and they know that this, that this, uh, that this uh, uh, criminal government and this, and this system of education in our country and, and what have you, is definitely brainwashing, controlling, and taking the freedoms and rights of the people away. And they're just waiting for the day for them to pull the plug and just take it all away. And so these people, and most of them are veterans. These guys get out in the field, you know, they're veterans. They've been trained in weapons and, and all of that. And uh, they're out in the field. They are now. Uh, I've been told that people are meeting right now, and, and they didn't tell me who, and I'm glad they don't because I don't know. So, you know, if they give me the truth serum and lock me up and put me in a straitjacket, they won't find anything out from me. All I know is what I read in the newspapers anyway, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> I've been told that they're already meeting in clandestine groups that nobody knows anything about, and they're not going to let you know who they are. They're a lot smarter than Barack Obama. They don't tell the enemy what they're getting ready to do. You know what I mean? He said, we're going to only send so many troops into Syria and we're going to do this, and blah, blah, blah. Trump comes along and says, what a fool. They ask him, what are you going to do? He said, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. Yes. I got two things. One is, uh, I don't know if you know about this, there's a J. Ham 16 that's coming out. Yes, I've heard about that. And there, the, the exercise is for that very reason, an insurrection. So that's what they're primarily focusing on, on mm -hmm. J. Ham 16. Right. The other thing is on the 19th of April, for 10 days, the group Soros and company that spearheaded the errors. George Soros? George Soros. Okay, what, what's he going to do? Well, he's now having the Black Lives Matter, all his different front groups, moveon.org, starting April 19th, will be in Washington, D.C., and they're talking about the rough, this roughing things like, like you've never seen before. And it's, it's all over Twitter, Facebook. It's, yeah, it's crazy right now. April 19th. So imagine that with the gate being open. What about that? And, and, Did you hear what this man say? Well, that's what I said a moment ago, yeah. <laughs> who knows who, who knows what's liable who knows what's liable to come. Yeah, he said that a long time ago. Yep. 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 Yeah. Now this brother mentioned Jade Helm sixteen. They had a Jade Helm last year. But Jade Helm sixteen is designed to teach them, train these people how to deal with civil unrest. Okay, civil unrest. Why is the government worried about civil unrest? See, why are they worried about it? They have a reason to be worried about it, right? And then April, the April the 19th, George Soros, a foreigner who has put millions of dollars into this election cycle in this country and tries to affect this nation, is organizing Black Lives Matters and a lot of other groups to, to moveon.org, to, to, to meet in Washington, D.C.? In D.C., to disrupt. To disrupt. April what? April 19. 19. <laughs> Remarkable, don't you think? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna, we just got, I know we're running over, but this is important. Just one, one quick thing, one quick thing. The Republican National Convention right now, the Republican National Convention, the movers and shakers in it, people like Carl Rove and them now are openly talking about a fresh face on the convention floor 
this coming, uh, when is it, July? July in Cleveland, Cleveland Ohio. And that uh, the indication is that, that, uh, that they're only using Trump and Cruz or whoever else as, uh, you know, they're using them that they intend to put their own man out there in, uh, in uh, Paul, maybe Ryan or whoever in, in July on the convention floor and make him the nominee of the Republican Party and they know that it's going to create a backlash in this country. Now, who do you think is behind these international trade agreements where all the jobs are leaving America and the, and the big wigs in the Republican Party making all this money? Who do you think is behind that? The one world government. That's who's behind it. So the one world government may very well be the ones who push this thing through in July. See, it'd be interesting to watch, won't it? To see who gets the nomination on the convention floor. That'll be very interesting. Very interesting. One uh, Republican uh, senator said, if you don't like our candidate, you can sit down. <laughs> I mean, just basically shut up. Yeah. What about the millions of people that stood in line for three and four and five hours to go in there and vote? See? You talk about disenfranchised. What about all those people? Does their, their voice doesn't mean a thing, does it? Not to the Republican National Convention. Yes, ma'am. So folks, all I can say to you is keep, keep your eyes open and keep looking up. Man, it would be a good thing if the Lord came back soon. Hallelujah. Yeah, radio frequency ID. Yes, sir. Say what now again? Who is that? Oh, that's the UT basketball coach? Oh, oh, let him eat cake. Okay. Marie Antoinette. All right. Is that what that? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll start at five after. Okay. It's 10 till. Give you a little bit of time to break there. Brother Rouye dismisses, please.